I'm a huge fan of MathWorks tools. I think they're wonderful. And every six months, it's a cumulative. I don't know how many thousands of people work, but it's kind of hard sometimes to grasp what is actually truly useful and what is not useful, right? So we all come from different domains and backgrounds. So um, the purpose of this talk is really to kind of show you what is new in 21A. Now, there I can kind of describe all my favorite things, but I think anybody who's associated with the MathWorks uh, tooling in some shape or form, there are always two videos that the MathWorks produce, and I would like to ask your attention just for three minutes. There are two videos which show the cool new things that came out. I think everybody on the planet should see this, and then what I will do is after these two videos, I'll dig deeper and open up MATLAB and show you a few of my personal favorites. Um, but bear with me as I show these videos, as I think the MathWorks does a really good job in summarizing the thousands of people's work in a couple of minutes. So here we go. That, that is the first video, which is uh, wonderful to see all the cool things. So let me just focus now a little bit on the Simulink to give some of the Simulink family a bit of attention as well. Release 2021A includes lots of new features in Simulink. Let's look at some of the highlights. You can use the Simulink code importer to bring your custom C code into reusable Simulink libraries. The tool provides step-by-step -step guidance to create a Simulink library from your code using the graphical UI or the command line. The code importer automatically analyzes the code and then generates a Simulink library that you can use in your model for simulation or code generation. With the record block, you can configure a single block to log simulation data to the workspace and a file for all simulation modes. The record block can log data both to the workspace and to files. The record block also visualizes data for the current simulation. You can customize the view using all visualization types supported by the simulation data inspector, including time plots and spark lines. Any data recorded in the record block is also available in the simulation data inspector for further analysis. Inspect and animate events in your model with the new event logging and animation capabilities. Logging the events enables you to inspect them in the sequence viewer and the simulation data inspector. Event logging and animation works with function call subsystems, Simulink messages, Simulink functions, and state flow charts. You can now use events from state flow in the schedule editor to control the execution of partitions in your model. Then view the connections between state flow charts and corresponding partitions using schedule connectors. With 21A, you can create and access component interfaces with bus element ports using all types of name-based composite signals including non-virtual buses and array of buses. 
Bus element ports can be used for a wide variety of situations where you're referring to an interface element by name. 21A also has new simulation performance improvements. Simulink now uses multi-core co-simulation. For this example, it provides a three times speed up on a four core machine compared to using only a single core. There is a performance advisor check to see if this feature can speed up your simulations. For each subsystems in rapid accelerator mode now run on multiple cores. And by leveraging SIMD instructions on your hardware, you can further speed up your simulations. Learn more about these latest features on our release highlights video and download 21A today. So um, it's, it always gives me goose pimples to see these things because it's kind of like a, as a long time MATLAB user, I always kind of figure out, oh, there's all these cool things happening. But I think it's useful to kind of call out that, you know, MathWorks is growing, there's lots of people doing things, but, you know, every new release, the new toolboxes from 21A, the three new toolboxes, 13 of the toolboxes got major updates. And that typically means there's something fundamental changing, which is important and useful to know about. And if you even look at just MATLAB, there's only over 100 new things that have happened, right? And I think everyone here knows that there's many domains and toolboxes available. So MathWorks has over reached the magical number of 120 products that they now offer. Now, just to be clear, I'm no means here saying that everyone shouldn't use everything, but what I do believe is it's kind of hard to know what is useful. So um, I kind of like, when I get a new release, I always look at the major updates. So this is the list of the toolboxes which got major updates. Um, and I would like to call out that there are a couple of new ones, right? The DDS block set, the Rated toolbox, and the satellite communications toolbox. It's easy in the middle of all these toolboxes to kind of not know about their existence, but they do appear for valid reasons. I think it's useful to take a look at it. Um, typically, they're maybe not the best and got all the features you're looking for in the first version that comes out. That being said is it they usually do solve lots of valid problems. And as everything else, there will be a new release with new features, more capabilities. A little bit how Chris also explained some of the new things that happened in Simscape. So definitely worth looking at looking at that. Now, the other one that kind of was a personal favorite of mine or Simulink uh, online is live. This has been a while for a, out for a while, but I thought this would be a good audience to share that this is something cool to try it out. But maybe um, more importantly than just the new tools, there's something that I personally find very interesting are these on-ramps. So as time progresses, Matrix is these free on-learning on-ramp tools and they keep adding new courses. And one of them is the Simscape on-ramp. So I think uh, one of the questions earlier was, how do you learn Simscape? Well, MathWorks has realized that more and more people ask that, and it's very nice to see that there's a Simscape on-ramp. So you can, uh, you don't need to have the tools per se to use this. Uh, I think you can start seeing that the MathWorks is they're combining their online tools and offering, that this just makes sense. But there are quite a few new ones that come out, and I think this is a good way to keep up to date with the different tools and applications that you have, right? So from state flow to control design, reinforcement learning, and so forth. So check it out on MATLAB Academy. If you're looking for a cool way to, to get going, uh, follow the details and it, it should work out of the box. So that's something nice, so I'm very happy about that. Um, but then maybe more to the purpose of today's talk. So I think you kind of understand that with all these changes, it's very hard for any single individual to kind of like describe things in a clear, concise way. So maybe the way I would like to share my talk with the rest of it is I kind of uh, cannot judge per se what is useful for automotive, for aerospace, for finance, and all the different industries where the tools are used. But what I can say is, in my mind, I split it up into four categories. So there's a newbie, so there's that person who is just starting MATLAB or has just discovered it. I think there's also some things which are useful for the casual user. So that's that person who uses MATLAB every now and again. And I think there's also another profile, which is the proficient user. So that's the person who probably who uses it uh, almost every day of his or her life. Um, but I think there's also another element which some features are useful is for the developers. So I, in my mind, it's the developers that go to MATLAB person who's building tools in MATLAB and Simulink for other people to use. Now, these four different profiles of people, they're actually very interested in, in, at least in my mind, very different capabilities. And when you see all these new changes, some of them, uh, depending on how you see yourself, will be more or less interesting. So what I like to do for the rest of my talk is kind of show you uh, just in MATLAB, so I won't be going to any of the other 119 toolboxes, but MATLAB is, I think, where most people spend most of their time. What are some of the cool new things that happen in 21A? Putting myself in the perspective of each of these different uh, user profiles. 
So that being said, um, I think before I start the 21A, it's also useful to talk about the 20B, right? So um, just so you know, we organize MATLAB coders on a regular basis, and it's become a bit of a tradition where I kind of share uh, some of my thoughts and interesting ex um, thoughts and about the new features. So I wanted to do a recap of what we talked about last time about 20B. So um, for 20B, uh, there was a few cool things. There was the new bubble chart and the new revised color map editor. The plot command got a few new little signs and then the live editor, you could resize images. Um, there is for the casual user, there are a couple of cool things. So there's a few new live tasks for optimization and even a camera. So that, that was kind of cool. Uh, cleaning outliers was a nice new live task that came out as well as read structs and write struct for XML files. Very interesting and useful. Um, another one of my favorites was actually that, you know, the spreadsheet, you can now preserve and out of format the, the column widths, which is kind of kind of nice. For the proficient users, um, last time we spoke about four things, uh, the patterns and extract, so an easy way for doing regular expressions. Um, you can also export multiple live scripts. So instead of doing one by one publishing documentation, you can publish a whole bunch in that one go. The group summary allows anonymous functions, which is kind of nice. Um, and the UI table uh, comes with automatic width. So anybody using the UI table sometimes realized that the width wasn't uh, the right one by default and you had to change it. So that was a nice little thing that I thought. Um, then for developers in 20B, uh, there was a few things I wanted to call out that you could compare and merge apps. So anybody using the app designer probably struggled when you put it in version control. How do you compare the changes? So that became easier in 20B. App testing, there's a drag and context menu, which is nice. Uh, there's a new command for validating which MATLAB release is being used, which makes life a little bit easier if you're maintaining multiple versions of MathWorks tools for your end users. And um, uh, there were a few new, uh, or quite a few new uh, function argument validators, which are useful. So this is at the 20B kind of thing, high level, what was done? Now, I just do this because um, uh, these were interesting and uh, uh, some of them might be interesting for this audience today. That being said, let's now focus on 20A and I'm going to be going through a similar structure and I'll be opening up MATLAB and showing them uh, my personal favorite ones, right? So let's look at the, the newbie. Um, so that for the newbie, uh, I'm going to be talking about four things. So in the live editor, there's a new drop down. There's the animation playback, live task, you can create a plot, and then there's the bubble cloud. So let me um, let me go to MATLAB and show you what I'm talking about. So um, I, I am here in MATLAB, so you can see that I have here in 20A. When I have got a few folders and each of my uh, folders will be a little live script showing my cool favorite new things. So let me open up the newbies to get started. And the first one I wanted to call out is if you notice now, notice this command here, plot, which is kind of kind of cool because um, I, I really like this, right? Notice that there's that drop down there. So I created a list with red and green and I create a T and a Y. And if I do my plot and I run this, it is very cool that, okay, it's a simple plot. And I think everyone kind of understands what that's going to do. Um, bear with me as the performance is a little slow because I'm producing and sending out this at the same time through Teams. Uh, but I have a drop down and I can change things. So I think this makes it much easier when you're sharing code with people that they don't need to figure out all the different parameters. You can have a drop down and it makes it easier for people to, to read. So I thought that was kind of cool. The other thing that I thought was nice is there's the animation playback. So I think in the previous MATLAB coders meetup, we had a, um, a passionate MATLAB sharing how he creates animations in uh, MATLAB. And I think this is nice because uh, if you now use animated lines and Comet is one of the ones which is majorly used, you can actually create, um, sorry, let me scroll down so you can see what's going on. So you can create an animation, right? Um, so this is nice. Having animations is nice when you're sharing your code with others. Um, but you know that that's nice. But what happens when you miss the animation, right? And I think that's what happens to many people is that you know they run their animation, and if you missed it, now what? And what what's kind of cool now is uh, you have a play playback animation. So you see the little play here. So I can just run this, and it runs faster. You can see it's rendering quicker because behind the scenes it kind of stores all the frames to make this. And this is a nice way of doing it. And you can actually change your speed. So I thought that was a kind of cool, nice touch as a way to share your live scripts in a more dynamic and interesting way. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, and I think this is uh, also pretty cool, is, you know, in the in the live editor, right, you have different tasks, right? And there's a new one which is called create plot. So the as, it, as the releases come out, these new live tasks keep expanding and they're, they're nice to do it. 
And the idea behind this is, you know, they're common tasks that people may or may not know how to program when they get started, but you can drag and drop a plot and you can, you know, create these plots without writing any code and you can kind of say, okay, so select my data, what do I want to see? And I would like to see, for example, maybe my variable T and I want to have a plot out of this and it kind of say, okay, you want to do a plot, what, that's a T, let's look at my do T for my X and interactively I can click different things and it will update it uh, on the side here. And I think this is a nice way for people to kind of explore, okay, how, how, how do things work, right? Um, and, and you know, you can choose how to, the line styles and things like that. But this is kind of cool because what happens underneath the scene is this code gets written, right? So people who may or may not know how to do the display name or something, these live tasks make life a lot easier. So I kind of like the way that these live tasks are making life easy. I think this is very useful for people who get getting started, particularly people who are coming back from a background of, you know, expecting things to be point and click. Um, so I think that's nice. Um, the other thing is uh, that I, I personally got a kick out of is, um, so I'm a big fan of visualizations and I think part of the the beauty of MATLAB historically is what kind of got me hooked on was the ease of creating a plot. Is uh, there's a new new visualization which is called the Bubble Cloud. I mean, it's nice to see that the MathWorks just kind of keeps adding to uh, their portfolio of visualizations. And um, you know, if you've ever tried to create a graph like this, it kind of becomes a bit painful. It's just nice that this comes out of the box. So I'm very happy with the uh, the Bubble Cloud as a new capability that has come out in 21A. So I think these are things which make life easy for uh, newcomers to the MathWorks ecosystem. Now, if I maybe talk a little bit about um, the casual user. Um, so this is that user who uses MATLAB every now and again. I think there's a few nice things that I wanted to call out. So one is export color space. Two is the name equals value syntax. Three, changing the font in the live editor. And four, uh, new graph algorithms, the all paths. So, what, what does this mean? Let me let me show you what this is. Um, so I'm gonna let me close this quickly, and I'm going to go to for my casual users. I'm gonna open this up, and let's go through this. So um, uh, give me a second while this loads. All right. This is one of the beauties of. Okay, here we go. So um, exporting the color space. So this is kind of cool that I think many people, particularly in academia, when they create a plot and you want to export the graphics, um, you know, there's in the plot command, you have that uh, little button at the top right hand corner when you export it. But what's cool now is you can not only just export it to a particular file, but you can also define the color space. So in the past, you would have to naturally change the color space in your code and then export it. And that was usually a couple of iterations. Now it's nice that you can just choose that out of the box and it makes it nice and easy. If you know you're giving this to a paper which is going to be printed in black and white, that you can have that in the code. So I thought that was kind of cool. But I think of all of them, the changes that have come out, uh, this is one of my personal favorites, um, is this name equals value syntax, right? So long time users have probably asked for this for a while. I, I know certainly this has been on my wish list from the MathWorks for a while, that you can now actually say, um, not have you know the quotes comma and the name comma uh, pairing, but you can actually say line with equals three. Um, this is, I think, a more common thing. I think in the open source world, this is very predominant and it's nice that MathWorks has this. And just to be clear, you can actually combine the two. There are a few gotchas around it, but I think moving forward, it's this kind of a nice thing that MathWorks has changed in the language that this uh, name equals value syntax. And it seems very simple, but uh, I, I kind of like the code a little bit more, right? So instead of saying color space, comma, gray, you could have said color space equals gray. And I think that makes it a, a little less code to write. The other thing that kind of happened was, um, uh, I think many of you use the live editor or I've seen it, but it always comes with the standard colors and you always have been stuck a little bit of what you can and cannot do with it. Um, I'm very happy to say that uh, <laughs> we can now change the fonts and the, the styles for the live editor. So it's maybe not the most elegant and easiest thing to get hold of, but if you go through the documentation, you get the idea that you can actually start customizing the fonts in the live editor. And I think that's nice if you want to put it in your own report style. So it's a nice change for, for from the MathWorks side. I was happy to see that. The fourth thing that I wanted to call out is the new graph algorithm. So let me let me run this for a second. Um, 
So I think uh, MathWorks has had graphs in there for a while, but what I kind of like is anyone who's studying graph theories, there's these common things of knowing which are all the paths, right? And MathWorks has added a few new functions, the all cycles, cycle basis, has cycles. But, you know, uh, historically it's been a bit of a pain to kind of say, okay, I want to go for this graph, I want to go from node one to node three, so node one to three, uh, what are all the combinations and all the possible paths that I can take? And it's nice that there's a simple call to say, OK, I can go from one, two, three. I can go one, two, four, three, uh, one, three, one, four, two, three, and one, four, three. And you, this this is nice if you, it's directional graphs. This also takes it into account. So I kind of like the fact that this has come up. Um, uh, maybe this is just because in the past I had to manually write this code. So maybe this is a personal thing that is not a huge impact for the world, but anyone working with graphs I will appreciate this. So maybe to continue a little bit on moving towards the proficient users. So now I'm playing the role now of that person who uses MATLAB pretty much every day of his life. Um, and there's a few cool things. So JSON code pretty print appeared. And I'm very happy about that. There's the bookmark in the editor, uh, profile and debug function uh, for is now available for your fun function argument validators, and you can now clean missing data for multiple variables. So that's a bit of a mouthful, these four things. So maybe I think the easiest way is to just show it. So let me show you the, for the proficient user um, what this means. So uh, notice that now this, my, my settings have continued, right? So it, it's continued across different uh, live uh, scripts. So this is associated with your MATLAB session. Um, so the JSON pretty print, I think this is pretty cool. So um, uh, anyone who has used JSON uh, will realize, and maybe I should just run this to show it. So, um, ooh. Ooh. why is that? Ah, interesting, um, uh, my bad. So I think I need to clear my variable space. Give me a second here, let's do that. Uh, I apologize for that. So uh, what was happening here, S, this was overwriting the variable S from my previous example. I apologize for that. So if I run um, this, you can see that I'm creating a structure with width, height, title, and there's a command inside uh, MATLAB and it's existed for a while, which is to encode a structure into a JSON file. Now this is all very nice, but the challenge with it is it comes on a single line and, and sometimes that's nice because it doesn't occupy too much space. But I'm really happy is now that you can actually print this and make it look very much JSON like and this is typically how other people find it easier to read. So it's nice to see the pretty print uh, equals true. Um, the other thing that appeared which kind of caught me off guard and I wasn't expecting it, but I, I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to use it a bit more often now is the bookmark in the editor. So there's this. Uh, <laughs> There's a new thing that appeared here, so let me highlight this. This is new, bookmark. And I was like, what? what? What's this bookmark? But it turns out that if you're a Simulink user, there's these view marks that you can kind of like put a placeholder and go to a particular view in Simulink. This is, I think, the way to think of it is the analogy in, in MATLAB, right? So what you can do is you can bookmark some code and have as many as you like so that instead of finding per se a function, you can go to the next part and it goes directly there. So I think that can be sometimes useful, especially with some of the longer live scripts that you want to make it easy for people to jump up and down and now there's a means to do that. Um, I, I think that there's still more, more work to be done here for sure, but this is a, a nice kind of uh, uh, enhancement, especially for anyone's got long live scripts. Um, the other thing that I did want to call out is um, the, so the function argument uh, profiling debugger. So it's been a, a few releases now that you know the X can be validated and there's this keyword arguments and you can kind of say it must be numeric of a particular size and there's a lot of documentation about that. But what is, what is new in 21A is actually um, you can actually debug it and you can put breakpoints in here as well as seeing the profile. So um, let me quickly show you what this looks like uh, because this this is kind of cool because sometimes people don't know how much time it takes and you want to step through it. So let me show you this. And this little example has actually got a, two important points. So I'm running the profiler of the code, um, but notice what happened. So you might say, wow, Gareth, what, 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 what is this? So notice that I called the profiler from within the live script and it kind of shows all the, gazillion other things and maybe gazillion is a strong word 
of what's going on. So um, here's the live editor evaluation. And all I'm really looking is to the to be profiled. So this is kind of a flame graph, which is new uh, for profiling. And it kind of shows, you know, just like the usual profile, it just has a different visual representation, but MathWorks has made it a bit more easy to use. But what is nice is you can now say in the simple little function that I had, you know, what is the percentage of the time used on some of this argument validation? And I think that is a nice thing that the MathWorks has had. And the code that I'm using, it's the same example that I showed before. This historically MathWorks has always had, but the new part is this line three is now being profiled and debugged. Um, but still, I think it's also an interesting thing that um, sometimes people say, you know, live editors, it's slow. What on earth? Why is it slower than the usual .m? But if you kind of run the profile on it, it's, it's interesting to see that there's actually a lot more going on behind the scenes than people may realize. Maybe not to be explored, but this is part of the reason why sometimes that responsive is maybe a little slower than you would expect from the .m. I thought this was a cool, cool, cool little insight to share, share with you. Um, then um, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about is um, the live task allows to work on multiple variables at the same time. So remember how I showed you in the insert that there's these tasks, they're live. Um, a few of them are very useful, like the clean missing data outliers. This is common for anyone doing any AI. The data is typically unstructured or there's missing values where you need to massage it a little bit. And that, that's typically quite painful. Um, so it's kind of nice to see that the MathWorks has got now this um, live task. But what was a bit of a pain was in the past, you could only use the cleaning missing data per uh, column or per variable. So if I look at this code, I'm creating a variable A and a variable B, 1 to 10. I'm putting a few NANDs for a very simple example. And to clean the missing data, I would have had to clean it for variable A and then variable B. Um, what, what's kind of happened now is you can actually add multiple variables. So that, that kind of is nice. Um, and, and I think it makes it nice that you can add multiple variables and do this at one go, as opposed to having two separate live tasks in there. Um, this is nice because, you know, uh, sometimes people say, well, what's the difference, right? So, you know, you can um, visualize different ones, and this, this makes it nice to visualize the two different ones, uh, and it, it redoes it. I, I think it can be still optimized a little bit more, but um, either way, when you're filling missing data, sometimes you want different types of methods. And I, I really think the fact that this is just here makes it really, really nice, right? So you can understand the impact of saying previous value, next value, linear interpretation. I mean, this is just nice that it exists here. And if you want to do this manually, it just takes time and, and I, I like this. So, um, but the key thing here is, it's cool that it exists. You can write the code and so forth. But um, I like the fact really that you can now have multiple variables being cleaned at the same time. Now to kind of uh, wrap up, I would like to talk a little bit about the, the, the developer, right? So this is the that poor person, and I say poor, but he's probably uh, one of the, um, this MATLAB is one of the most important people to drive the ecosystem because as companies use more and more MATLAB, people start building tools for others to use, right? So the MathWorks does a good job to make everyone more efficient, but it's very realistic in larger groups that people develop their own little tools, utilities, user interfaces to make life easier for others. Now, the requirements someone like that has are very, very different, right? And in 21A, I think I wanted to call out four cool things. So one is the class diagram viewer, which is new. Two is the um, uh, UI tree now has checkboxes. The app designer has a split view and the scroll is now available in the UI table. So um, just like the other ones, let me kind of show you what this means to kind of uh, ground this, okay? So um, let's go to the developer profile and let me look at this, open this live script and run it for you. So the developer profile here is this, this the MATLAB who's building stuff for others, all right. Why is this taking a little bit to visualize? I guess, okay, here we go. So um, the class diagram viewer. So it, it turns out that um, if you're a developer and you're building tools for others, uh, typically you, you have a more of a, maybe more of a computer science background and you like the object-oriented programming, this is typically a, a best practice for scaling out things. And 
I think underneath the hood, lots of the things that people use in the MathWorks tools are actually classes or objects, and that's how the MathWorks develops things to scale up things. Right? For example, the system objects. This is an internal thing that MathWorks can use between MATLAB and Simulink, and it is basically a class definition that allows you to use code and makes it more scalable. Now, but usually what happens is people who get started with MATLAB don't know this, but if you're building things for others, this is generally a best practice. But what's new about it is, you know, many other languages, if you have like all these classes and inheritance and properties, at a certain moment, it's hard to see and visualize what you're doing. And it's very nice now in 21A that there's this class diagram viewer. So let me run this and you'll see what happens. So in my, you get this new look and feel user interface and by default, nothing appears here. Um, I'm going to import from my particular folder and there you can explore this on your own, but I think I just wanted to show you what this means and you can see I have uh, something appearing here. I want to open um, this folder and I have two classes, a top and a child. And let's see what that gives us. So what it gives you is a nice visual representation of the properties and the methods associated with each of your classes. And it kind of defines in a nice visual way um, the inheritance. And this is really nice because you can change, zoom in, zoom out. It makes it easier to read and understand complex code. But moreover, it kind of also shows some of these things which um, sometimes are slightly different to other object oriented programming. But it's nice to have, you know, if it's a package, a class, an abstract, it's sealed, hidden, and you can see these properties and you can play with it. And I, I kind of like visualizing this in a nice way. So I'm, I'm very happy that this came out and anyone who's developing large complex things will probably benefit from having the class diagram viewer. Um, I definitely think it's a start, but it's nice to see that there are other things that has been leveraged, like the outer range that comes from other parts of the networks tool. So that's one cool thing. Uh, no, I don't want to save this. Um, let me show you the second one. The, the second one I wanted to call out is the UI tree with checks. So this seems like a very trivial thing, but um, I think many of you know that the app designer is slowly but surely replacing the guide. Well, I would probably argue anyone starting a new project should use the app designer. It's got more widgets, but one of the nice ones is actually the UI tree. But historically, let me run this. When you run the UI tree, so, so what is this? Uh, you didn't have these checkboxes. <laughs> so you could see things, you could visualize it, but I think this is nice because you can now have checkboxes and automatically expand, and this will make your user interface is a bit cleaner and easier. So I'm very happy about the fact that the trip, uh, the checkboxes now arrive. The other thing is on the concept of the app designer. So I'm always surprised because many people don't know of its existence. So let me quickly open up the app designer and, and show you what it looks like. Um, so this is kind of the replacement for guide, right? So it's got a modern look and feel where you have a, a a way to get started, the visualization is nice. You can have a blank app or tutorials, but let's just start with a blank one to kind of show you. So what this means is on the left, you get all the nice widgets you can drag and drop and life is good. But as you're kind of dragging and dropping these things, right? So I can drag uh, an axis chart here. What that does is um, it, it adds a, a widget or a component to my user interface that then gets uh, populated. So this is a bit slow because of teams and generally this is really fast. So if I drag and drop a button, this is pretty straightforward, but what's happening behind the scenes, and I think this is the cool thing, is you have a code view and a design view, right? So I have my app one, it inherits from the app base and, and MathWorks automatically generates the code. And anyone who's been exposed to creating user interfaces know that you have to go through this and, and the different approaches but it's nice to have this duality of view, right? But the challenge then becomes, as you know, if you right click and you have a callback function and then you can add your, your different commands and you can call your MATLAB functions and, and so forth, uh, this is all good. But, but you can imagine the more of these things I add, the bigger it becomes. And then usually what happens is you find yourself scrolling up and down a lot here. And uh, it's kind of cool that um, you can now split this. So it just makes life easy looking at two different parts of the code, right? So typically you want to know what are the names of your <laughs> widgets and what their name. I mean, you can get them here, but this has a tree. So at a certain point, it becomes very click and point. It's easy to kind of have this little separation, which makes life a lot easier when writing code. So I, I thought that was a nice addition. Um, so now I'm not going to save this. Uh, let me go back to the last point that I wanted to bring. 
which was um so there's the ui table in the app so that that's kind of cool um so you know you can read the patients xls so the ships with mathworks you can have your variables i can create a table and then what i want to do is represent this table in a user interface right so um this is a common thing people will use table data types and then what you want to do is uh it, particularly if the table is pretty long you can kind of see but actually i want to go to a particular row so historically it's been hard to get to there and what's nice is now the scroll command which has existed for a while it now supports the ui table and it allows me to uh, programmatically just go to my row 25 and i think that is a kind of nice addition so uh, let me oh my window disappeared i apologize for that um here it is. You can see that it magically went to uh, row 25. So I think that is nice because sometimes when you're using these tables, you want to select and there's some usability and you actually want to highlight and go to a particular view in a table, especially if they're very big. So this is a, a nice addition from the method. Okay, so that was um, my uh, whirlwind of cool new things that have kind of come up. Um, I will be looking at the questions in a, in a, in a second, um, but I think it's uh, useful to see that these are my personal favorites and I'm happy to connect with anybody. If you have other ones that I, I missed, happy to learn that. Uh, connect with me and I'm happy to kind of show that.